Hi everyone, I'm Johan. Today I'm going to talk about the Apple iOS engineer interview process. At the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of the process itself, what interviewers look at, and a bunch of tips for each round. Quick intro, I'm from Prepfully. This video has been put together by Apple iOS engineers who are also interview coaches on Prepfully, the very same ones who have helped hundreds of candidates with mock interviews and advice. This is a video version of our much more in-depth written guide, which we'll link within the description. You can always book time directly with the coaches for a more personalized experience on Prepfully. Okay then, moving on to the interview. The interview process for an Apple iOS engineer typically consists of three rounds. First, a video call with the hiring manager. Next, a technical phone screen. And finally, an on-site round, which lasts roughly six hours. Let's discuss each round briefly, starting with the first video call with the hiring manager. This one is typically a character-based round where you talk about your past experience. Your interviewers are also interested in learning if you are knowledgeable about Apple's development frameworks and app development in general. Two quick tips for this round. Make sure you prepare an impressive introduction of yourself to stand out. Also, think ahead and decide on a past project you will speak of to demonstrate your competence for the role. Moving on, next we have the technical phone screen. This is typically a one hour round during which your technical and problem solving skills are tested. You can expect standard leak code questions plus one or two behavioral questions about your past project. Here are a few tips for this round. Make sure you get lots of leak code practiced and review your knowledge of iOS development frameworks, data structures, algorithms, and software development processes. As with the recruiter call, be prepared to talk about your past projects, your role in them, and decide in advance which ones you want to leverage for different stories, such as something you were particularly proud of versus something you learned a lot from. Once you're through the technical screen, you will be invited to the third and final round on site. It typically lasts around six hours, during which you will face a bunch of interviews across three separate interviews. The algorithm, data structure, iOS system design, behavioral. Let's discuss each briefly. Three quick tips here. Practice solving coding problems using online resources such as LeetCode or HackerRank. Brush up on your knowledge of Swift or Object-C programming languages. As you write your code on a whiteboard or in an online editor, make sure to explain your thought process throughout and collaborate with your interviewers for the best results. Next up, the behavioral round, which is to test your ability to handle conflicts or challenges in a team setting and judge your interpersonal skills. Again, three tips here. Make sure you think ahead and review your past experiences working on iOS projects and identify specific examples that demonstrate required skills and competence. Practice answering behavioral questions under simulated interview conditions so that you can deliver concise, effective responses. Another tip is to research Apple's cultures and values and try aligning your responses with them. Finally, there's the system design round. It's important to note the iOS system design interview is a bit different from traditional back-end focused system design. The interview you'll face will be much more app focused than back-end focused, so it's worth investing into preparing for them. Your interviewer is trying to understand your ability to solve a complicated iOS engineering design problem, or in other words, can you architect a high-level solution to a problem that has multiple concepts and components? Ideally, you'll cover a range of topics that are going to prove relevant in the actual job, the view layer, the networking, storage cache, etc. The three things they are specifically looking for are technical skills, structure and approach, and communication and collaboration skills. We have five tips. This is the most critical part of this video. Scope and clarify. This is maybe the most critical one. Since these questions are super broad and you want to narrow definitions down into something you can actually attack in the 40 minutes or so you have, it also has a major side benefit in that it lets experts choose which areas they want to focus on, since they'll have a short list of things to assess you again. Good questions to think about. How many users are we talking about? 
What should the experience be while you're waiting for your confirmation? What some of the error states might be? What are the latency requirements for sender, receiver, message delivery? How are you going to store messages? And if there are any constraints around it, what kind of features are we going to need to support the MVP? Have a structure and methodical approach. My general recommendation is to split things into discrete layers, starting from the view, controller, network, storage, cache, since that's how you design a system in real life. And then within these, discuss concepts like performance, efficiency, and scale, as well as potentially product-specific nuances like time zones or scrolls or accessibility. Which brings me on to my third tip. Watch out for hints. Let me give you an example. Maybe you're designing some kind of calendar element and your interviewer asks, are you sure you'd just like a simple timestamp for this event? This is an explicit hint that you might be missing something. Maybe you should be storing a start time and an end time. Or maybe there's some complexity related to time zones or something. Use this as an opportunity to either pivot or clarify or explain your thinking. Which neatly flows over into my fourth tip. Think out loud. You're solving a problem and it's super useful for your interviewer to know how you're approaching it. And even more so for you, since they can course correct if you're going down the wrong tangent or a line that they're not interested in. Finally, the practice. Practice with professionals. Prepfully has 18 iOS engineers who help candidates with mocks. They've collectively helped over 500 candidates already in the last couple of months, which means they've got a great insight on the common mistakes to avoid as well as advice on how to improve. Right then, that's all from me. Don't forget to check out our more in-depth written guide in the video description and book a slot with Prepfully's software engineer coaches for personalized guidance. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.